Welcome back. Uh, another been a long time since I did a video, uh, but I got a great question on a uh, YouTube video, um, and thought probably the only way to answer this because it's it's fairly in depth uh, is how do you scale a tanker? And the the first honest question is you scale a tanker the same way you scale any other uh, truck. You drive onto the scale uh, because the liquid is is in motion. Um, a lot of times it's going to take a while for the liquid to slosh back and forth. Um, and it's going to vary by 20, 50, um, maybe even 100 uh, pounds. For the most part, if you're, going, if you're talking about a, a way station um, and you're passing by a scale on the side of a highway, uh, DOT is not going to wait. There are a few places. Virginia is an exception. Virginia will make you wait until the liquid stops moving. So you could be sitting there a while. Um, so if that's what you're asking about, uh, you just have to sit and wait for the liquid to stop moving. Um, if you're talking about loading and how do you know uh, how much product you can load, uh, the, the simple answer is there's a lot of places that we go that will load you while you are sitting on a scale. So the truck is on a scale. They put uh, a spout in the top of the truck uh, and they start loading you. And you know you start out at about 30, 31, 32,000 pounds, whatever uh, your truck is. Mine's right around 30,000 pounds um, unloaded. They fill it up. Uh, until they get to pretty close to 80,000 pounds. And you have to remember that the people that we order from, uh, or not that we order, that order the, the products, um, they want to get as, for the most part, they want to get as much product as possible. Um, the contract that I run on, uh, the dedicated that I do, says that we have to be able to haul 50,000 pounds. That's why we run the lightweight trucks. In addition to the fact that a lot of the guys, um, I don't spend a lot of time in their trucks. So as an example, I go home every day. So I don't need a ton of cabinets and, and whatnot. Uh, but I don't, I, I have that ability to haul 50,000 pounds. That's why my truck is right around 30,000 pounds um, when I'm unloaded. So you add 50,000 to that um, and you're right at the 80,000 pounds. So if you load on a scale, they're going to load you up to 79.9, 79.99, uh, and, and they don't go, most places don't go out to one pound increments. They'll go out to 10 pound increments or 50 pound increments, uh, somewhere along those lines. Um, so that's one way is they'll load you on a scale. Um, so that's, they're physically putting product in as the truck sits on the scale. You can usually see the scale number. If you can't see it, the, the person who's operating and loading uh, the trailer can see. And they'll stop it when they get close to 80,000 pounds. Another way that they do that is that they will scale you when you get to the facility. So they'll get their base number. Say it's right at 30,000 pounds even. You go and you get loaded, you're not on a scale at that point, they just add product, and then you go back and before, as you're leaving, they put you back on the scale, and then it says, say, 80,000 pounds, and they go and they make note on the paperwork, or they'll give you a scale ticket that says, you scaled in at 30,000 pounds, you scaled out at 80,000 pounds, uh, your, your, your total product weight is 50,000 pounds. Uh, there are other places that are drop and hook. Um, drop and hook, as we've discussed before, you drop a trailer off that is empty. That's somebody else's trailer that later on that company, that customer is going to load that with somebody else's product. So somebody else has dropped a trailer off earlier, either earlier in the day, the day before, whatever. That then trailer has been loaded by the company, you're gonna hook up to that. So you drop an empty, you hook up to a loaded trailer. So usually in those cases, and one of our largest customers that I've talked about before outside of Chicago, uh, what they, you have to go on a scale three times. When you get there with an empty trailer, you will scale in. So you scale with an empty trailer, you drop your trailer off, you go back to the scale, and because not all tractors weigh the same, so they're not gonna just 
say, well, every tractor weighs the same amount. They're going to actually weigh your tractor and they'll have the weight of the tractor that dropped off that trailer and they can figure out exactly how much your empty trailer weighed. You'll go back, you'll hook up to your loaded trailer, you go back to the scale a third time with your loaded trailer and then they do the math and they figure out, okay, you scaled in at this weight, your tractor weighs this amount, the trailer weighed that amount when it came in, here's how much product you have. There are then, the final option is there are places that you have to use a yardstick or a dipstick. Uh, the side of these trailers have uh, a metal plate on them um, that is a loading gauge. And the loading gauge tells you if you put one inch of product across the bottom of the trailer, there's X number of gallons. If you put two inches of product across the bottom, there's X number of gallons. If you put a foot, if you put two feet, if you put three feet of product, and it tells you every, in one inch increments how much product there is um, in the trailer. Now there's two reasons that that's an important uh, piece of information to have. Everything weighs differently. Chocolate, liquid chocolate is going to be heavier than if you're hauling water. Oil's going to be somewhere in between. Um, everything based on density weighs something different. Um, so what you're going to need to know is how much it weighs per gallon. And then a lot of times, obviously, you're not going to be expected to memorize the, the product weight for everything that you haul. But obviously, the places that you haul out of, they're making it. They know how much it weighs. And they'll help you out with it. So if you're loading... What will happen is you'll have to sometimes load from the back of the trailer. It's called back loading a trailer. And as the product rises up, you'll have a tape measure or a yardstick. And however close to the top or the bottom of the lid is how much room you have left. And you can figure out how much you've put in the back. And you can estimate about how much weight you have. Now, it's up to you if you want to hit a scale at a uh, truck stop cat scale, that's up to you. But that's another way that you can figure out how much product you have in the trailer um, besides just either loading on a scale or hitting a scale uh, empty and then loaded. So it's kind of a little bit, uh, it can be a little convoluted. Like I said, there, there's just kind of that dance you do when you have to go to the scale, drop a trailer, go back to the scale, pick up a trailer, go back to the scale uh, at some of these uh, shippers that we go to. Um, a lot of places, what I do with my drop and hook, we don't have a scale. And the reason for that is they load the preloaded trailer on a scale. The information I don't have, well, let's get one of my old bills of lading. It has the information right on the bill of lading. As they loaded this particular trailer, you can see that it was empty 28,150. And that's the preloader truck was 28,150 pounds. Full, it was 78,150, so that means there was 50,000 pounds of product. Um, and so they'll, they'll provide that on your bill of lading. So that way you know how much is in there when you pick up your loaded trailer. So that's kind of an idea of how it works in terms of figuring out how much you can haul. And then it's up to you. It's, you know, if you know you can haul 50,000 pounds, which I can because I have the lightweight truck, a lot of our over the road trucks can haul 47,000 pounds. So they would not be able to haul this one that I, I did yesterday. Um, but it's up to you. It's up to you to know how much you can haul. And you can obviously figure that out based on you with an empty trailer. If you if your truck is 31, 32,000 pounds, you're not gonna be able to haul 50,000 pounds. You're not gonna be able to even haul 48,000 pounds. Um, if you're 32, five uh, with, with an empty truck. And then that comes up to the, the other point is, and, and this is not just tanker related, but, uh, because they like to fill us as close to 80,000 pounds for the most part, once you're going to some place that you're going to get loaded, you should try to have a full tank of fuel. 
Uh, if you get to a place, you have a quarter a tank of fuel and they fill you up to 79950 and you then have to say, well, I need fuel to get where I'm going, you're going to be over your 80,000 pounds. So it's best to get fuel before you go. You might not haul as much because you're going to pay, the, the customer's going to pay the same amount for you to haul the freight if you haul 50,000 pounds or if you haul 49,500 pounds or 49,000 pounds. Um, so do yourself a favor so you don't have to worry about, you know, stopping every couple hundred miles and adding 50 gallons of fuel uh, because you're, you're up against that 80,000 pounds. It just pays to get fuel before you get loaded. Hope that's some uh, helpful or interesting information about how weights work in tanker. Thanks so much for uh, watching. Again, if you want to come to Prime, click on the link in the description, and uh, we'll talk to you again next time.